It's a beautiful day down here in the Sunshine State of America with temperatures rising to 85 degrees this weekend. But it's not just any weekend. This weekend is for electronic music dance fans worldwide. It's what you've all been waiting for. This weekend is Ultra Music Festival. Ultra Music Festival is part of the infamous Miami Music Week where EDM fans and superstar DJs from across the globe descend on Miami for a week-long massive party celebrating the best of electronic dance music worldwide. Only in a city like Miami can you find seven days of sun, fun, and the very best dance music and energy that the world has to offer. Welcome to Miami. Let the sun guide you. EDM fans from all over the world are lining up at the gates as we are just moments away from the kickoff of the largest Ultra Music Festival to date. Welcome to Ultra! What do you expect from Ultra? You never forget this my whole life. We're so excited. I don't want to wake up on Monday. Just, yeah, here to feel the music. Just enjoy my time with my beautiful friends. I love Ultra! Love you, Ultra. Ultra music is life! Where are you from? I'm from Taiwan. Originally from Russia, grew up in Baltimore, I live in Costa Rica now. Dominican Republic. I'm from Delaware. We're from New York. Chicago. Ecuador. DC. Virginia. Miami. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Represent Jersey, baby. <laughs> Came a long way through this and keep on coming back for more. Any specific artists that you're here for? Tiesto, Armin, Dead Mouse, Dead Mouse, Afrojack, Afrojack, Laid Back Woo, Tiesto, Dead Mouse, Cascade, Vici, Carl Cox, Carl Cox. I want to see Empire of the Sun. Orozco, Benny Vinasi, Skrillex, Skrillex is the shit. Pendulum, Tiesto, Tiesto. You are the biggest fan of Tiesto? I would think so if you look at my tattoo. I'm stoked for all the Dutch DJs, Betty Legrand. David Guetta, Will I Am. You know what? I gotta disagree. I'm here to see ass and titties. Open your eyes. All right, well, main stage starting spinning, so we're ready. Doors are open. Doors are open. Yeehaw! It's 4.30 p.m. and you are listening to UMF Radio. The crowds are gathering up around main stage as the people are ready for today's first big act, the one and only Fetty Legrand. But this won't be Fetty's only day. He makes two big appearances at this year's Ultra Music Festival. For me, this is like the fourth year I do uh, Ultra and I play twice, like both days. Which for me is kind of ideal because I, I do main stage and I play with Carl Cox. He's such a, a nice guy, he's such a, a very personable person. He comes across in his music and his style. Fede Legrand is, is, uh, is a special DJ with a special sound and there's no other DJ like him out there. He really brings that to, to the dance floor and that's so nice to see that, that there's a, a mutual respect between what he does as a DJ and what, how people basically accept him as an artist. Uh, and people love him for that. He decided to get over here, show the skills, on the tables, make some noise for the one and only Betty
energy here is, I've hardly seen it anywhere else. It's, it's, I don't know if it's something in the water or, or whatever, but like these people just keep on going. It doesn't matter how hot it is outside. It doesn't matter if it's main stage, a small tent, a big tent or whatever. It's just, they really, really go for it. If I knew exactly what it was, it would be good because then you could make every festival in this way. But I, I think that's it's the energy from the crowd that makes this festival like one of the best in the world. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> All good? How's the tent looking? Amazing, huh? Yeah, I just saw the drawings. I haven't seen it for real yet, but ridiculous. 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 Miami, are you ready? Ultra Music Festival returns for the 13th edition. Friday, March 25th. Saturday, March 26th. Sunday, March 27th. Live from Bicentennial Park in downtown Miami. Let's go up to the main stage area and go up to uh, Carl City. Join 150,000 of your closest friends. Is that the biggest uh, stage you've so far? Yeah. yeah. Tiesto, Duran Duran, Carl Cox and friends in an all new two story mega structure. I'm hosting my own area here, or I've been hosting my area here at Ultra Music Festival for the last seven years. When we started playing for Ultra, there was no kind of areas, it was just a um, maybe one or two different stage areas, of which was just an amphitheater. Every time I came to play for Ultra, I just came and played one, one hour or one and a half hours and uh, I wanted to give a little bit more to the festival so we decided that we wanted to, to have our own arena uh, which became Carl Cox and Friends Arena. Jesus, this is huge. I really wanted people to, to have an experience of a festival within a festival so for, for me to be a part of that it was something that I felt that I could do very, very well. He looks just like you, doesn't he? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, for us, it was something that we could basically have control on all the production and uh, all the sound and all on all the DJs and the artists that I really wanted people to hear. So for me, to be able to host the Cole Cox Arena here at Ultra is very special. I want to start now? <laughs> we got some turntables, man. Let's go. <laughs>
festival three days every day is good there's music for everybody every EDM lover and it's just massive Ultra for me, I think, uh, is something of an experience it, because it's all under one one roof. It's all in one place. This is like a part of Ultra as well. It's like a festival in between a city. It's not just a festival. It's like the biggest dance music festival in the world. It might not be the biggest people-wise, but it is the biggest because it takes place in a moment where all the DJs from everywhere in the world are in Miami. It's during the Miami Music Week, so you have all the like the, the electronic house music lovers from all over the country, even internationally over here. So everybody that loves dance music all around the world, Europeans, Asians, Australians, they all fly in here to listen to new dance music, to see their favorite acts because everyone performs here. Columbia, are you all the DJs and producers and record labels from all over the world come here this week anyway. They're all here. So that's very important because there is something like a communion of people that know about this music. So you don't only play for people, you know, that just come and have a good time. It's not only one more party, it's also a party that is celebrating that type of music. say I want to go to Ibiza it's like it's surrounded with that cloud you have to go to ultra at least once it's like an American Ibiza festival in the middle of the city it's the biggest dance party in the world because you know it's it's very unique to see so many DJs and producers uh, in one spot it's probably the only time in the year when we all party together Welcome to the largest dance floor in North America. Welcome to Ultra 13 and UMF Radio. Good morning, Miami. Did you survive last night? I sure hope so. What a night that was. It was amazing. Have you seen this year's Carl Cox Arena? It's massive. It's huge. By far, it's the biggest tent ever assembled in Miami. It's not a tent, actually. It's a structure. Yeah. <laughs> they say tent. Tent is when you get the peg and you get a bit of rope, you know, and you go boom, boom, boom. That's a tent. This is a mega structure. I always say that, you know, a good party is about the music and the people. But I have to say that this this year, the production was really sick. It's gotten a lot better over the years. I mean, in the beginning it was it was good, but now if you look what they invest in stage and sound and 
LED walls and lasers, and it's pretty cool. Ultra started on the beach, it was right across the bay on the, on the sand 13 years ago. Every year it's got bigger, bigger production, bigger attendance, better lineups. And now here we are 13 years later and we're three days, 150,000 people in, in beautiful Bicentennial Park. When Ultra started, it was between 10 and 15,000 people. And, uh, and that was quite easy to manage up to a point. And now there are, I don't know, 50, 60,000 people per day. <laughs> That's unbelievable. It's very interesting to see the whole development. You know, when they started off, it was actually the worst festival in the world. You know, the, the first three, four years, we had so many technical problems, you know, DJs complaining. There was a lot of uh, basic stuff they couldn't do right. And I think they learned so much in the last years, like the last four or five years, it really went up a lot. And, uh, and now they're they so professional, you know, the, the production looks more than amazing. You know, we really go through and try and do some innovative things. We, we all have an idea, I think, of what we want to accomplish with it, but we always try to, uh, to expand it a bit. I think that's really important to always, you know, go one step higher and, you know, never like go back and be like, okay, that worked, so we just, you know, go for that. If it's myself, I'm going to a festival. I want to have the ultimate experience. So when we, when we do Ultra from the programming, the production, the lineup, everybody involved, it's all about giving every person that walks in through the gates an experience like they've never had before. After you see like the top headliners, you know, you can make a whole festival with that. But then below is another headline festival. The acts that they've, they've had over the, in the past, like The Killers and The Prodigy, uh, Black Eyed Peas last year, I mean this year they have Duran Duran and Razia. That's phenomenal. That's maybe one of the things that I like really, really as well, is that it's not only dance, you have some electronic, like more like bands or, or even some off things. I'm, I remember the first time being here that The Cure actually played here, which surprised me, but it worked, worked very well. It's our favorite part of, one of our favorite parts of, of producing the festival is, is, is figuring out, looking at the different lineups, the different possibilities, the different acts, creating the right formula each year that we feel is gonna make us the most successful. If you get booked here as an artist on Ultra, like, the whole world is gonna see you. It doesn't mean they like you, it means they're gonna see you. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Afro Jack in your house, Ultra Max, so no! Being booked on Ultra is like, uh, like an official introduction in the dance music scene. That's what, that's what I see it as, as last year when I played there. I played as a changeover set between Underworld and David Geller. And they were like, uh, because David said like, yeah, you should try him, he's really great. And okay, so I went on stage, I was really nervous. I played my first song and everyone was like, <laughs> like the crowd was like, <laughs> it exploded, exploded, exploded. I started producing 12 years ago just for fun. And then I wanted to play for my friends. And I wanted to play the songs I liked. And they didn't get them. So then I started remixing the songs I liked. So I still like it and they like it too. The DJ in a way is, is, is a teacher, you know? You know, I mean, it's all up on him. Of course, you know, the DJ, DJ is there to have everyone, you know, have a good time. And that's my approach for sure as well. But at the same time, you gotta bring them something new, you know? That's why DJs were always called tastemakers as well, you know? Because they bring something people haven't heard of. I get a kick out of making people listen to something they never heard before, and they like it. When I make music, but when I play as well, I, I see myself more or less like a chef cook. You have different ingredients, and you take a bit from this style, a bit, a bit from this style, and you kind of 
try to make a nice blend of all, all of the things, and I think that's that's my personal main thing. It's not like we try to please everyone, but we want to like rock everyone, you know. because we have a special treat. German engineering is upon us and all the way from the beautiful city of Berlin, Boys Noise. He's gonna be ripping it up because he is the bad boy of electronic and he's here for Ultra Music Festival. I played the first time at Ultra in 2007. That was a really, really special time, I think. Um, I remember I was playing right after Deep Dish on a big stage and the sun was going down and I've had like one of my best sets ever. I think he's one of the most creative guys I've seen in, in, in a while, and he's he's not afraid to do something that is maybe not so obvious. And that's something I really like about a producer or a DJ, because I think if you take risks every once in a while, um, even, even though it might not work right away always, but I think that that's what an artist in general should do, because that makes you evolve instead of doing the same thing exactly the same over and over, and I think that's what he does really, really, really good, and he's an, he's an amazing, technically skilled DJ.
hoping to play on the stage where I can see the ocean. And it was such a nice atmosphere tonight, like when the sun came down and I was like, okay, now the darkness comes and stuff like that. It was, yeah, it was really nice. And it just passes by so quick, you know, you, you can't really like, you're enjoying it, but it's like gone and you wanna like do play longer, you know? David Guetta walks through the hallway, knocks on the door. Who I am opens up. He says, hmm, you're David Guetta. Give me some music. So David plays him some music. Will says, oh, that's hot. So Will, I am from the Black Eyed Peas, starts getting into dance music. He sent me a text message saying, uh, I love your music. Do you want to, you know, produce some, some records for the Peas? And uh, I was very honored. I was very excited. But he came to the DJ booth and hang out with me. You know, he, he, he really, I respect the piece for this. They really embraced the culture. You know, it was not like, okay, this is hot, we're gonna do it. You know, they really got into it. And I think he had the vision of what was gonna happen. Electronic music has taken off because it's the truth. There's no middle person. There's no politics, there's no record company, there's no industry. The industry is, hey, I made this beat, and you bought it on Beatport or you took it from some freaking website for free, but you like it. Electronic music is at the height because of the era that we live in with cell phones, smartphones, the internet, and it's direct contact between the person who made the beat and the person who likes the beat.
electronic music is so popular right now? I think it has to do with a few things. I, I think it has to do with the fact how it started, which was actually really underground. And you still have like a really proper, very strong underground fan base and they will keep it alive like forever. And uh, I think that's very important that you have something like that at the base of a, of a movement. I remember the time when I was playing records or buying records and you really needed a little bit of time to you understand the record just because the sound was so new and so fresh and nowadays it's way more easier for the young people to get into it because there's already certain elements in the more you know mainstream music dance music is is uh, crossing into pop music and dance artists are on the radio these days so I mean I think that's basically it you know it's you know a few of these records a few artists like Lady Gaga or Will I am or you know, um, artists like that that are incorporating the dance sound into their pop music. I think that's been a bridge for a lot of people. I think the crossover is a good thing for everybody. You know, it learns people who are not associated with dance music. They learn about dance music, like they hear a track from David Guetta and then they're like, oh, I like this kind of style of music. What is it? Electronic music. And they start Googling and, and I don't know, Facebooking, whatever. And then they find like uh, hundreds of other artists. This was really big before, but the medias, especially in the US, were not supporting us. And what happened is that because I brought that music together with names that people knew in America, maybe it made radios feel a little bit safer, you know, and they started to play it and realize that people loved it. So now on the radio, it's not just big producers with pop dance songs, but now it's also dance mu like actual dance music you hear on the radio. People actually play like six minute tracks now on the radio. They, they never did that. They never played bleeps on the radio. They never played big climaxes on the radio. Now they do. I'm glad that finally it's happening big time. And it's actually because it's America, so you always make it bigger so it's it's probably going to be even bigger than us done with the Black IPs and with Akon. Everybody was like, oh, this is the new sound, you know, house music coming from Europe. And I'm like, but American people telling me this. I'm like, but you know, I've been playing house music since 88 and it was coming from America. It started in Chicago and it was actually, it came from disco and kind of evolved over the years. It went uh, to Europe where it evolved even more. And now we're kind of back in America. Um, and it's gonna evolve even faster because like uh, pop music is involved now. Well basically the crossover with dance music and, and the pop music uh, happened in Europe 10 years ago and all this time I've been waiting for it to happen in America and finally like this is the point where it's it's happening. It's just getting so big everywhere dance music it's, it's crossing over so so rapidly and like all of the big rap artists is doing doing dance beats to the track so everything's coming together the time has met and now because of all those superstars you know taking this culture and making it theirs it's coming back to europe on the bigger level so not only is growing in the u.s but it's also growing again in europe
check this beat out. Hey, you want this beat? Check this one out. You like his track? Check this one out. This one was made not for someone to sing over or not to be sold, but for you to listen to, for you to dance to. Check it out, 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 check it out. Mm. Before we started making lots of money, it's like it's happening now. It's getting big, and we're playing for hundreds of thousands of people. But we started because we wanted to make a new style of music. I think it's only the beginning. It's gonna grow and grow and grow. Because you know, I've seen it happen in Europe. I grew. So for the U.S., it's only beginning now. We are rocking and rolling here in Miami, and the beat goes on. Now making his way to the main stage is French superstar David Guetta. He's bringing it big, and he's bringing his friends. So I hope you're ready, because here it comes. It's going down, down, it's going down, down, it's going down. Miami, 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 Miami. I think the main reason why it's globalizing is that we're going through some difficulties around the world. There's economic crisis everywhere, and people were tired of negativity. And I think the kind of messages that we're bringing, you know, it's all about love and peace and being together and sharing a magic moment and, you know, leaving your problems behind. And, you know, our music is very positive. It's about the music, it's about the love! I don't think we could ever imagine that, you know, like two years after, when you listen to the radio in the US, it's, it sounds all like the music we were doing at that time, you know. So it's, you know, Europe and Australia for a long time, you know, and now America and Asia and now Africa, the whole world is dancing.
amazing to play at the Ultra Fest, just because you get such you get such great feedback from everyone, and, and your set is almost like a like a showcase. So everyone with all, all the phones and everything, so you can launch new tracks. You can yeah. This is all great experiences, and uh, for me, it's kind of it's almost like a musical village one weekend here in Miami and, and I, I love that, I smile every time I go to any of these places because I see people dancing to music, that's just awesome. It's just unreal. I mean, people are standing this close for like a mile or something. I don't know. And it goes all the way back. And when you get them going, and I had like two or three really, really nice moments. You, like you feel like the whole crowd lifts up or something. It's just, it's magical. Magical. is here and what better way to cap off this incredible weekend than with the man who's been on the journey with Ultra since the very beginning. I think you know who I'm talking about. His name is synonymous with the words electronic dance music worldwide. I'm talking about the one and only DJ Tiesto. I've been connected with Ultra for many, many years. I think I played on the very first festival I did here. And uh, I think for the last 10 years, I played every year, I think. So it's kind of a tradition. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Ultra Music Festival welcomes you to the main event of the evening. Ultra makes some noise for the biggest DJ in the world. Share the love for Tiesto! Good evening, Ultra. My name is Tiesto. I think every year Ultra gets better and better and better.
Mixed with Tiesto, what a set. And it's not over yet. Can you believe this? Two big DJs, two of the world's biggest DJs, side by side at two opposite ends of the field. We're going to the other end right now, where we're giving you a treat. We're giving you someone that is so special to our hearts here at Ultra Music Festival. He's been imperative into making this festival for what it is. He might have caught his legendary sets at the one and only Space Ibiza. We have him now, and he is ending the night. In what better fashion could it be for you, our EDM family? So get your cameras ready and put those flashes on because here he is, Mr. Carl Cox. Cameras ready, prepare to flash. Pictures of these two. Ready, prepare to fly. Carl Cox probably has the most incredible career in all of us. I think he's actually one of the most friendly people I know. Carl Cox is definitely one of the legends. I mean, he's been around for, for, for quite a while and he's still amazing. I think it's amazing to see that he's been DJing for maybe 30 years and he still loves it so much, the energy. He has his own sound and he has his own fans he has his own world and, and I really, really respect him and his career. And it's, it's nice to see a person who is there in there for the right reasons and who really loves the passion. And, and I feel it and I can tell that that is what it's like to be outside there on the dance floor. So I just give them the very best I possibly can from where I'm at. You know, not only am I playing one day, I'm playing two days and I'm always playing the last set after everybody else to really give them my essence and, and to say thank you. Campus ready, prepare to fly.
soul brother right about now the funk soul brother check it out now the funk soul brother right about now the funk soul brother check it out now the funk soul brother right about now the funk soul brother check it out now the funk soul brother right about now the funk soul brother check it out now the funk soul brother right about now the funk soul brother check it out now the funk soul brother The funk soul brother, 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 brother. Nothing but love for the one, the only Miami! 